All right, we'll, uh, we'll start with, uh, we'll get into chapter six. Okay. And, okay, so as far as chapter six goes, uh, we are talking about probability distributions. Okay. All right, so it's week five. I just kind of want to um, step back and give us, uh, remind us of what our class is about. Okay, so we are in um, statistics, and we said the uh, the big picture in statistics is, uh, you know, we want to be able to make conclusions about the population. Uh, we want to be able to make conclusions about the population even though we've only observed a sample. Okay, and so um, Basically, chapters one through four, which was the stuff that was covered on the midterm, was all about being able to describe a sample. So we learned, you know, numeric summaries and sample. Uh, I'll just write sample statistics. You know, um, in describing describing variables, etc., even two variables uh, with regression. Etc. Okay, so chapters one through four was all about describing a sample. Uh, chapters five and six and the first half of seven, five, six, and seven, I'm going to say seven A, the first half of seven, um, which is basically what, you know, so chapters one through four, this was midterm one, right? Okay, midterm two will um, cover chapters five, six, and the first half of seven. And this is all about probability, probability, probability distributions. And essentially, what our data, quote unquote, should look like according to theory. Okay, so that's chapters. Uh, Five, six, and, and seven. Okay, so this is and this is going to be like midterm two. So, so chapter uh, the first part of the course was about describing a sample. This this next chunk that we're in right now is what the data should look like according to theory, and then we're going to take these uh, our understanding of both of these sections and uh, and bring them together into statistical inference. Getting a low battery warning. I just have to come with extra batteries. Have you guys seen Ocean's Eleven? It's like uh, my pop culture references are too old now. Um, <laughs> there's a scene where uh, he, he has extra batteries, and that saves, uh, prevents the uh, the mission from failure. Okay, so anyway, not that this class is that critical for our well-being, but uh, I like to think it is. So, um, so we have uh, statistical inference. 
And they were out stealing money, so <laughs> not whatever. Okay. Anyway. All right. So, so in statistical inference, we we basically are going to compare what we observe in a sample to what we quote should see, and that will give us insight into what the uh, the population looks like. Okay. So we. Uh, we compare what we see to what we should see, what we actually see to what we quote unquote should see. And that, that provides insight. So effectively, this is kind of how, this is why we bother with all of these chapters that there is, a, there is a central idea that connects them, okay? So, you know, we, we learn how to describe what we see. We're going to learn um, what we, quote, should see under theory. And then in, uh, in statistical inference, we compare what we actually do see to what we should see and, and make conclusions based on that. Okay? All right, so, um, so let's talk about probability distributions. Okay? So a probability distribution is a theoretic <coughs> function, or we can, uh, we can just say it's a curve. The, uh, the mathematical term would be a function that uh, describes uh, basically how, how common or how uncommon uh, values will be. And so, um, so I'm going to just kind of draw this, this thing, which uh, which will look like the normal distribution. Okay. All right. And so the uh, the vertical axis, the height of our curve or the, our function, represents um, the technical term is density, but we can just kind of think of it as the frequency. Okay, so higher values indicate higher frequency. Okay, and, and then this is just a number line. All right, so, you know, I could put in the middle right here, um, say this is the value of 100, okay? So we would see 100 is at the, uh, at the top, okay? Um, so uh, the curve is tallest at 100, or is highest. So that means values of 100 are most uh, appear most frequently. Okay. Um, if I go over here, and I don't know, I'm just making up numbers along the number line. I could say this is 80. Okay, and so we see the curve at 80 is about half as high as it is at 100. Okay, so the curve at 80 is about <coughs> half as high as uh, it is at 100. Okay, so that means values of 80 appear about half as frequently as values of 100. OK, does that make sense? All right, and then so, you know, if I go down uh, to like right here, and then my values of 60, you know, 60 is quite uh, an uncommon value, okay? 
So this would be fairly uncommon because it's pretty close to zero, okay? Or even less common. All right, so um, a probability distribution, if we look at the height, it kind of tells us how, how, how likely or unlikely those values are, all right? Um, is that okay? All right, and so, um, but what we, what we do is uh, we often deal with this shading business, and we say um, the total area under the curve is 1, okay, or 100%. Okay, and so, you know, if I, if I draw a line right here in the middle, and I shade uh, everything over here, not a trick question, how much have I shaded? 0.5, right? The, the area, shaded area is 0.5. All right, um, you know, we can have other probability distributions, okay? And in a, if you were to take a, like an upper division probability class, like stats 100A or something, you would encounter a bunch of different, different things, okay? Um, you know, as far as this class goes, we're gonna just keep it pretty simple. And we're going to have a, so let's say here's a, okay, so here's a probability distribution. Let me, um, all right. And so what does this uh, indicate to us? So this would be, this is what we call a uniform distribution. And what it says is that values between 0 and 1 are all uh, uh, equally common. Is that okay? And so, uh, and and the same rule applies here. The total area under the curve is equal to one. Okay. So let's say uh, I draw a cutoff at 0.5. That's supposed to be at the halfway. All right. Uh, okay. I can't handle this. Um, so let's say I go from 0.5 to 0.7. Okay, and I, let's say I've shaded this uh, this piece in here. Okay, so how much is shaded here? And you'd say the answer is 0.2, right? Okay, and then so th th that would mean um, the probability of drawing a value, a uh, value between 0.5 and 0.7 is 0.2, according to this uniform distribution. So far, so good. Great. And uh, okay, so now uh, with the um, with the reference table, we can answer more difficult questions. Okay, so so this is a, we're going to say this is a standard normal distribution, which is um, 
is basically a normal distribution with a mean mu equal to 0 and standard deviation sigma equal to 1. So this just means we have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation equal to 1. That's a standard normal distribution. So if the mean is 0, that means the balance point are right here in the middle. We put in the number 0. Okay. And uh, in our reference table here is the standard normal distribution. Okay, So if you look at the reference table and you go um, to the top left corner, If you look at the, uh, the top left corner, we will see that the value 0, 0.0 and, uh, and 0, 0.00, it, it'll say Z in the uh, top left corner. Uh, if we look right there, it says uh, point, uh, point 0.5, right? 0.5 thousand, OK? So this is essentially what we had in the, uh, in the previous picture, where I said, if I draw a vertical line at 0 and I shade everything to the left, the amount I have shaded would be 0.5, OK? So um, you know, yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to, whoops, that's not what I want. OK, well, anyway. So you know, if I draw a vertical line at 0.5 and I shade everything to the left, and I think you guys have that on the previous slide. Um, we would have shaded in 0.5, right? And, and that's OK with everybody, all right? Let's say I go uh, a little bit to the right, OK? And I go to 0 0.08, OK? Well, in that case, I would stay in the row 0, 0.0, and I would go to the column 0 0.08. And, uh, and what value do I see there? I see 0.5319. And so that says, if I were to shade everything to the left of 0 0.08, the amount I have shaded is 0.5319. Okay. And, uh, and that's how we use this table. Okay. So if I have to, um, uh, I just want to make sure, is this, is this okay with everybody? Okay, so 0 0.08. Now, let's say um, I come over here, and I say, well, how much have I shaded in green? How much is shaded in green? And you would tell me that answer is, how, how would I get this? Yeah, I would do 1 minus 0.5319, right? right? Because the total area is 1. So the amount shaded in green is going to be 1 minus 0.5319, 1 minus 0.5319 is 0.4681. OK, so that's what I have over here. The, uh, there's, a, there's a little uh, trick you can do, and, um, and if, if you don't want to use this trick, you don't have to, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it to you guys. And, uh, uh, you know, anytime the, the table, we have to remember, the table will always give us the area to the left. And, and you can see they, they have this little diagram, right? It shows you the shaded area uh, on the positive side is over there. It's, to the left, and on the other side, it's the shaded area is still to the left. So the table will always give you the area to the left. Okay. Will always give the area to the left. Okay. And. Uh, but one thing to note is that the dis normal distribution is symmetric, OK? OK, so the area 
to the right, so in that picture I said, you know, how much is the green shaded area? So the area to the right of some z, some value z, is always equal to the area to the left of negative z. All right, and so in our last, uh, on the last slide, we said uh, I'm going to um, so I'm going to draw a line at you know 0 0.08, and I said how much is um, shaded over here? Okay, and we said well this is going to be equal to 0 0.4681, and the way I got that was I had to do 1 minus the area to the left of 0 0.08. So that was 1 minus 0 0.5319, and that's how I got 0 0.4681. Okay? So the quote unquote trick is um, the table always gives us the area to the left, so I could just. Uh, and it's symmetric, so I can look up negative 0 0.08, okay? And the area to the left of negative 0 0.08, if you look that up, negative 0, 0.0 and 0 0.08, if you look that up, you get 0 0.4681, okay? So this area over here is uh, the exact same. This is also 0.4681. Okay, and if, if you're not comfortable with that, don't worry about it, okay? Don't worry about it. But it's a, it's a little trick. So if, if ever uh, you're asked how much is to the right of something, you can also just look up the, uh, the negative of that thing find the area to the left, because the table will always give you the area to the left. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just try this out. Uh, make sure you got this. So this will be your first uh, clicker question. Okay, let me, uh, let me find some, uh, some answers here. Draw this a little uh, All right, so question one is uh, find the uh, shaded area. Okay. So what is the shaded area? The shaded area being the green <laughs> shaded area. <laughs> okay.
Here, we'll say uh, just, uh, I don't know, 20 more seconds. Maybe uh, 10 more seconds to get your clicks in. Okay, click, 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 and uh, we're gonna hit stop here. Okay, let's see, let's see how you guys did. Okay, oh great, you guys did well. Okay, so let's uh, let's just take a quick look. So here um, we can look up. There's a, there's a couple ways to do this. One we could look up negative 1.0 and the column 0.04. Okay. So keep in mind, we want to go to negative 1.0 and 0.04. This one corresponds to like 1.4, and we don't want uh, we don't want that. Okay. So negative 1.04 gives me 0 0.1492. Um, and the table always gives me the area to the left, so that's what we have over here. And we want this side, so I'm going to do 1 minus 0 0.1492, which gives me 0 0.8508. Okay. The other option is, uh, you know, we could say, well, here the picture is asking for the area to the right, so I can just look up positive 1.04 and take the area to the left, and we would also get 0.8508. Okay, so the area to the right of negative 1.04 is equal to the area to the left of positive 1.04. So that's, uh, that's an option there. Okay. Is that good? Just want to make sure the... Uh, there are a few, few people who missed it, so I just want to make sure we're okay there. Okay. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's try another question here. And so here... All right, so your answer choices. Um, are gonna be So the question here is um, the shaded area is equal to 0 0.025. Um, where is the cutoff? Cutoff C. Okay, go ahead and. Uh, We'll just say uh, maybe 
15 seconds to get your clicks in. Okay, just a few more seconds, get your clicks. Click, click, click. All right, three, two, one. Look at this. Okay, well, uh, almost everybody got it. Okay. All right, and so, okay, so in this case, uh, and, and I think uh, most of you guys have this, we are looking for the area, we're looking for the area closest to 0 0.025, okay? And we actually find that area exactly. We find 0 0.025 and it's in the row negative 1.9 and the column 0 0.06, okay? So this means that a cutoff at negative 1.06, if z is equal to negative 1. Point, I'm sorry, negative 1.96, that tells us that this area is going to be 0 0.025. Okay. So the key difference here between this problem and the previous problem was that this time I gave you the shaded area and you had to look up the z. Okay. If you picked, um, you know, negative 4.013 or something. That would be you looked up uh, negative 0.25 or something like that. Okay, that's you're using this incorrectly as the z-score. Okay, uh, this is the area, so you want to find the area. Now, in other cir circumstances, I might say like you know the shaded area was 10%, and you're not going to find 10% exactly um, in this thing. Okay, but you would just pick the uh, the value that's closest to 10%, which would be uh, 0 0.1003, and that would be z is equal to negative 1.28 in your table. Okay. Oh, by the way, these tables are for you to uh, for you to keep. Okay. Um, you'll need to bring them to section for like quizzes and stuff. Uh, I will provide tables on the midterm. I, you know, last quarter I didn't, and then I got comments from students who said people were smuggling in notes on there. I don't know something. So. <laughs> So I'll provide tables for the uh, for the midterm, but um, uh, but it, but it's your responsible to bring these to the to the quizzes, okay? And so for um, if you lose this table or something, um, there is a copy on. I'll, I'll post a copy on CCLE, and it'll be your responsibility to print it out if you've uh, if you've lost yours. Okay, so um, so do you guys remember the uh, empirical rule? Kind of, okay. So what, what, what happened with the empirical rule? The empirical rule, there were three numbers, and we said the first one was 68, and the next one was 95, 99.7, right? And this correspond to within one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and three standard deviations of the mean. Kind of familiar? Yeah. OK. So from uh, on the previous slide, we said that at z equal to negative 1.96, I will have how much shaded? 2.5%, right? Okay. Because of symmetry, if I want 2.5% in this tail, where is my cutoff on this side? Z would be positive 1.96, right? Is that, is that good with everybody? OK. So if I've got 2.5% um, over there, 2.5% there, how much would I have in the middle? Point nine five, right? So everything adds up. So, so this is uh, this is where this two standard deviations are coming from. So according to the normal distribution, so if uh, if we have the normal distribution, okay, ninety five percent of the distribution.
is between um, z equal to negative 1.96 and z equal to positive 1.96. Okay? And so for the empirical rule, we just kind of say, oh, 1.96, that's pretty close to 2. And that's how we get 95 and 2 standard deviations. But effectively, we're looking at negative 1.96 and positive 1.96. And that, that actually encompasses the middle 95%. Sound good? OK. And uh, all right, so this has all been with the, uh, the standard normal distribution. And we can now uh, apply these to um, other normal distributions, but ones that have different means and different standard deviations. So let's say we have, um, let's say we're talking about um, tigers. This is the example I used last class, so I'm going to use it here. So we say, we're going to say, um, and apparently, uh, um, as far as tigers go, the, um, the males and the females, they're, they're quite different in, uh, in, um, in size. Um, so we have uh, male tigers, uh, we'll say their weight follows a normal distribution. Have you guys heard of a liger? They're crazy. Um, it's, it's not beyond the scope of this course. But um, we'll say normal distribution, the mean is uh, 490 pounds. And we'll say the standard deviation um, is 42 pounds, OK? So there's ligers. Oh, and there's tigons. Um, but um, anyway, whatever. Um, So we're going to say um, the normal follow a normal distribution with a mean of 490 and a standard deviation of 42, and we can ask, um, you know, what percentage of tigers, or I'll, I'll say male tigers, and uh, and I'll say male Bengal tigers. This is where we'll be specific here. Um, male tigers weigh less then uh, we'll say 520 pounds. Okay, So I'm going to draw a diagram here. All right. And is our percentage going to be over 50% or less than 50%? Well, so if you draw your diagram, okay, and it says, uh, what percentage of male tigers weigh less than 520 pounds? I'm going to put in the middle, in the mean, 490, and I'm going to draw my cutoff line at 520. Now, I can't go to the standard normal table and look up 520. It's, it's not going to be there. Okay. So what I do is I convert 520 into a z-score. Okay. So we convert 520 into a z-score. Okay. And so how do I do that? You guys remember? Z is x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So I get uh, 490, uh, not 490, I get 520 minus 490 divided by 42. So what is that? Uh, 30 divided by 42. I get a z-score of 0 0.714. So I'm going to just round off to 0 0.71. Okay. So this score of 520 is equivalent to z equal to 0.71. Okay? And here the question says, what percentage of tigers weigh less than 520? So I'm shading the area to the left of 520, because that's the side that's less. Okay? And so when I look up z is equal to 0 0.71, the answer I get is 0.7611, right? So I look up. The row 0.7, I go to the column 0.01, and the value I get there is 0.7611. Okay? And so that will be the area to the left of 520. Okay? And that's going to be my answer, right? What percentage of male tigers weigh less than 520 pounds? My answer 
is effectively 76.11 pounds. All right, 76.11 percent. Okay. And so, even if you don't have um, a standard normal distribution, all normal distributions can are basically just scaled up versions of this. So you just turn the whatever you're looking at into a z-score, and you look that up. Okay. Uh, we'll expand more on this on Friday, so uh, we'll see you then.